McDonald's. Truly the pornography of the culinary world. It's a dirty treat. Everyone lies about how often they visit, and by the end of it, you're a sad, sweaty mess. Oh man, they gave me a paper straw. That sucks. I didn't know McDonald's was on that vibe. But as someone who hasn't thought about their health since high school gym class, I am no stranger to the Golden Arches. And because I visit semi-frequently, I decided to Google the poison that I'm putting in my body for safety. And instead of finding out the horrifying nutrition facts of a McDonald's meal, I instead went down an equally horrifying path of learning about all the weird shit in McDonald's history. So come with me and learn everything there is to know about the weird world of Mickey D's. So if you look up the United States of America in a dictionary, at one point in that definition, you will see the word McDonald's. It is intrinsically linked to the American experience, like ice in your drinks or air conditioning. I don't know how you people live without both of those things, but whatever, I'm not gonna get into that. McDonald's has weaved its web into the mind of soul of every living American, and by doing that, it has created an undoubtable empire. So here are some scary facts about McDonald's that proves it is a little too powerful. Number one, a new McDonald's opens up every 14.5 hours, so at least two a day. Does that make sense? I don't know if that math's correct. That's too many McDonald's though, I know that. I mean, is it nice to know that no matter where I go, there'll always be those shining arches to make me feel safe and to give me American food? Yes, but it's a little unnecessary. Number two, McDonald's is more well known than Jesus. You know, son of God, pretty big deal. I mean, the study was a little bit more complicated than I'm making it, but in the survey of 7,000 people across six countries, more people were able to recognize this than this. Eternal Salvation, Happy Meal toy. They went with the Happy Meal toy. Number three, we have over 14,000 McDonald's in America. And that's kind of hard to visualize because America is a big place, but in comparison, we only have 6,000 hospitals, which is not good. I mean, yes, maybe Americans don't have their priorities straight, but I've never been able to go to a hospital and get a McFlurry, so. Number four, and this one scared me the most for some reason, but one in eight Americans have worked for McDonald's. They, they, they give out more jobs than the government, I believe. In America, it's more common to find someone who worked at McDonald's than it is to find someone who smokes cigarettes or doesn't know how to swim. That's just horrifying. Why do they have that much of a market cap on the economy? And number five, McDonald's is by far the biggest toy distributor out of anyone because they give out those hat meal toys, which is kind of sad. Thinking about those mom and pop toy stores that are just trying to give toys to children, make them happy. Meanwhile, McDonald's is pumping out millions and millions of the shittiest toy you can possibly imagine. So yeah, don't step to McDonald's. They'll put you in the ground. Remember that lady who tried to sue McDonald's for getting burned and she was absolutely absolutely right, and then they ran a campaign saying that she was an insane person just trying to make money, and we all believed it. Don't, McDonald's is crazy. So over the past several years, McDonald's has moved away from the mascot. We all know Ronald McDonald and his crew of merry pranksters, but you know, have you seen him recently? Probably not. That's because originally Americans didn't care about marketing to children, and then a bunch of children got really sick and fat because of McDonald's, and then we're like, hey, why are them cartoon characters talking to my kid? They had to pull back a little bit. But just because they're not on the TV anymore doesn't mean there's not a long and extensive history of McDonald's mascots, because there is. And it's, I don't know why there is, but there is. So let's take a look at all the weird McDonald's mascots and try and figure out just what the hell they were going for on this one. Most of the roster of the McDonald's mascots came from a little place called McDonald Land. McDonald Land was the setting of a bunch of TV advertisements in like 1971, where all the little mascots lived together. And I believe Ronald McDonald was an oppressive ruler. It was designed to have this fantasy whimsical nature to it in order to get the attention of children. And it worked because as we all know, boomers love McDonald's. And with McDonald's Land came all the weird little critters. We have Grimace, who just had a boom of popularity due to the Grimace shake trend, which I, that was a, that's a weird moment in the internet. But did you know Grimace started out as an evil character? He originally had four arms and would steal the milkshakes out of people's hands. And I still don't know what this character design is. What is evil and looks like this? Placenta? Also his uncle is called O'Grimacy and he brought Shamrock Trace to the restaurants. I'm done talking about Grimace. And then we have the Hamburglar, who is a big cultural icon, but I don't really remember seeing a lot of him when I was a child. He spends most of his time developing various schemes to steal sackfuls of hamburgers. Hey guys, I don't know if this is uh, a Mandela effect, but I could not find one image of the Hamburglar with a big sack over his shoulder of hamburgers, and I vividly remember that as a child. If anyone can find that picture, let me know. I'm kind of freaking out about it, but we're gonna keep moving on with this video. He actually was originally called the Lone Jogger, one of the least intimidating names I've ever seen in my life. He was just an old man with a pointy nose and long hair, but fun fact, that's not fun. That's just scary, so they took that away. His full government name is Hamilton B. Ergler, which is obnoxious and makes me angry. And then recently they did a rebrand of him where they made him hot and people didn't like that, so they, they stopped that immediately. And then we have Officer Big Mac, who was like, you know, the law of the land, and he didn't do a good job because I already talked about two criminals. So it's believed he got the job through nepotism because his brother is Mayor McCheese, so I believe personally, a cab. All cops are burgers. And then we have Birdie the Early Bird, which is really hard to say, that was like four takes in a row. She was put in the lineup to promote the breakfast items that McDonald's gives out, and they made a point to make her the early bird because if you don't show up on time at McDonald's, they don't give a shit. They're not gonna give you an egg, fuck you. She's also one of only, if not the only female character on the entire thing, so I don't know how these things are breeding, I don't want to get into it. And then we got the big cheese himself, not Mayor McCheese. I don't actually didn't write anything down about him. But then we have Ronald McDonald, 
who, as we all know, is the most famous clown ever, except for this one. This one's a little less scary. He first appeared in a 1963 commercial looking like this. It was terrifying. In a commercial, he literally starts talking to a child. The child says, I don't talk to strangers. And then he said, well, I'm not a stranger. I'm Ronald McDonald. And then he gave him a cheeseburger and the kid ate it. So bad messaging all around. They rarely put him in commercials anymore. One, because they don't want to market to children so heavily. And two, because he's a clown. And literally no one fucking likes clowns. Why did you bite me? Ow. Oh my God. Where did that come from? I didn't do anything to you. I'm kicking you out. Get back up. Back up. Much like the mascots, McDonald's has tried various other things and failed spectacularly. I have compiled a list of the strangest McDonald's items for your viewing pleasure. Some of them I want to try, some of them I can't believe ever were made in the first place. Number one, the mixed spoon. Put it to McDonald's to put branding on a regular utensil. It was this long thin spoon that they would give it to you when you bought a coffee so you can stir it properly, but they had to discontinue it in the 1980s because apparently it was the perfect thing to do cocaine with. Who'd have thunk? There was even a story of a news journalist who went to a New York City party and he went to the front door and there was just a bowl of cocaine and 20 McDonald's spoons in it for everyone to just enjoy. I get, it does look like a perfect thing to put things in your nose with, I'm not gonna lie. Number two, in 1990, McDonald's tried to compete with KFC by releasing McChicken Wings which I can't imagine those were any good. McDonald's has a specific taste to it, and I can't imagine that taste in chicken wings goes too well together. Also, a bunch of mishaps happened, like this one time where a lady found an entire deep fried chicken head as a wing in her bowl, so they got rid of it pretty quickly. Mixed spaghetti, mamma mia, who in God's name would ever ask for this? Released in 1970, mixed spaghetti was something you could get. I don't have anything funny to say about this one. Why would you go to McDonald's and get spaghetti? Spaghetti is like the easiest thing to make yourself. And then it was discontinued in every state except for Florida, I guess. They liked it enough, so whatever. And then we have the McCoola burger, which was just a slice of a circular pineapple as a McDonald's burger. Not on a McDonald's burger, as a lot of people originally believed, it was just replacing the burger. They were marketing it to Catholics because Catholics can't eat meat on Fridays, but they already had the filet of fish at the time, and I don't know what they were trying to do with this. And then finally, McDonald's at one point tried to make fajitas. McDonald's fajitas, that was a real thing. They tried to cash in on the Tex-Mex hype of the 90s, but instead they just released a really sad menu item. Their slogan was a taste of Mexico without the sunburn, so they knew they were directly marketing to white people, and they got rid of it pretty quickly because even though it's not authentic Mexican, Taco Bell can do whatever that was a million times better. So sometimes McDonald's is cool, sometimes. There was that time that McDonald's was infiltrated by a crime ring in order to rig the Monopoly game. That's pretty cool. And sometimes McDonald's likes to get a little crazy and not open up a McDonald's in the worst part of your city. Here are the list of the coolest McDonald's I could find from around the world. Number one, Porto Portugal. The actual name of this specific McDonald's is called McDonald's Imperial, which sounds like it's about to invade another country. It's said to be the most beautiful McDonald's in the world and it has like stained glass windows and chandeliers and shit. Originally it was a cafe that just was called Imperial Cafe in the 1930s, but then McDonald's bought it. Uh, which is a travesty, but you know, it's a cool thing to look at while you're eating a Big Mac. And then we have the McDonald's in Roswell, New Mexico, which they just shaped into a UFO, which is becoming more and more prevalent. At night it lights up and on the inside there's like a floating Ronald McDonald like he's in space. Uh, all this just to go in and get six chicken nuggets and get the fuck out of there. Who stays in a McDonald's for that long? Then we have Taupo, New Zealand. I don't know how to do a New Zealand accent, nor do I know how to pronounce that town name. I'm so sorry. The owner of this McDonald's, for some reason, had a DC-3 plane that was decommissioned, and he just put it in the parking lot next to it for 20 years. For no reason. It took him 20 years to refurbish it, and then he turned it into seating. But for that entire time, there was just a McDonald's with a big-ass plane next to it. Why was that a thing? I don't understand. And then finally, we have Guantanamo Bay. It has a McDonald's. It looks like this. Why? That's fucked up. Nothing makes me want a medium Coke and a large fry like waterboarding and the screams of innocent men. Fuck me. So that was everything about McDonald's I was able to look up before I got too hungry and had to go to the store myself. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me your favorite fast food place. Mine is Wendy's. Fuck this. Mine is Wendy's. I love Wendy's so much. People give me so much shit, but they have a fucking chili cheese baked potato. It doesn't get better than that. A baked potato at 2 a.m., it's so good. New videos every Friday. Now I'm gonna cut to Tucker in the future while he's editing this video, and he's gonna feel like shit because he's just ate an entire McDonald's meal. Back to you, Tucker. Oh my god. Oh.